we go into Matthew, Matthew chapter 5, Matthew chapter 5, Matthew chapter 5. We're going to look at one verse of scripture, verse number 9. Matthew chapter 5, verse number 9. Matthew chapter 5, verse 9 says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. I say amen to the reading of God's word. Uh, today we're in part seven of our kingdom alignment series. Today from the topic, the missing piece. The missing piece. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your presence is here. Your presence is here. Your anointing is here. And God, we thank you for saturating this atmosphere. Now, God, I pray, God, that we will not allow ourselves to check out, but I pray, God, that we will all just sit up in our spirits the way you can be able to speak to us. You only allow us to feel your tangible presence that way, God, because you desire to deposit something in our spirit. Now, speak to us. Rid us of every hindrance. Rid us of every distraction. Uh, help us to lean in and be able to receive the engrafted word of God. He's able to build us up, equip us, encourage us, empower us, uh, rebuke us, reprove us. Whatever it is you so desire to do, we ask you just simply to speak. We're listening. And it's in Jesus' matchless name. Amen. Amen and amen. You can be seated wherever you are. Amen. Let's thank God one more time and anticipation for what it is that he's going he's gonna to say to us today. <clears throat> the missing, the missing peace, the missing peace, the missing, the missing peace. As we've been looking at this, this Sermon on the Mount, we, we see that Matthew has been very, very strategic in allowing us to be able to peep into what it is that Jesus Christ is saying to his people. Uh, when you study this, as we told you every week, but I'm going to continue to say it because I want, I want to get down in your heart and your spirit. Uh, Matthew chapter 5, Matthew chapter 6, Matthew chapter 7 is all Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. This is him literally depositing. It's literally him paving the way is literally him giving us the agenda of the kingdom he's telling us how we as kingdom citizens ought to act and how we ought to react it literally has given us the marks of true followers of christ and this has been really a blessing to us because god has really been having us on a journey and we really have been unpacking and discovering that my belief in god does not constitute me being a follower of christ just because I believe in him, that does not mean that I am a follower of Christ. The scripture says that even the demons believe uh, and they do tremble. So that doesn't make me no different from a demon. Belief is necessary, but belief is not sufficient. We've also unpacked that, that works are not enough. Just because I do good things and I'm a good person and I help people and I don't take anything from persons, that does not mean... And I'm a follower of Christ. But no, we've learned, and this is where we've been kind of climbing to, we've learned that it is my faith in God and it is my good works that when we put those things together and we continue to chase after God, that it begins to be inculcated in my heart and in my life and my character of God, what really exemplifies me being a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. Here, you, you may not be able to say, whenever someone says to you, are you a believer? Are you a Christian? Are you a follower of Christ? Jesus is literally telling us it's not when it is I, I, I repeat a prayer it's not whenever it is I put my name on the road it's not whenever it is I get baptized it's not whenever it is I do something tangibly like that but no uh, these workings these outworkings these be attitudes literally how a Christian attitude ought to be ought to be uh, my, my indication that I am a follower of Christ it'll make more sense to you here in a moment Matthew chapter 5 verse 1 we got the role Matthew 5 1 says seeing the crowds he went up on the mountain and when he sat down his disciples came to him they came to him verse 2 simply says and he opened his mouth and did what he taught them and he said verse 3 says blessed are the poor in spirit and these are literally the keys to a blessed life uh, the keys to a happy life come on we we, we keep on talking about uh, the pursuit of happiness how we want to be happy uh, by our definition of happiness happiness it, it falls short because it it's based on what's happening. If, if things aren't happening the way that I want them to happen, then I'm not happy. If things are not going the way I want them to go, then I'm not happy. If things are going well, then I'm happy. But that's not the kind of happiness that this word blessed speaks to. But no, it speaks to the fact that no matter what's going on around me, this happiness that I'm experiencing is because of the favor of God. It's because of the hand of God. And God is literally saying, I have everything that I need, that I'm blessed. He doesn't say that, that happy 
are the rich. He don't say happy are the famous. He doesn't say happy are the successful. But no, he says happy or blessed are those that mourn. Blessed are those that are humble. Blessed are those that hunger and thirst. Happy are those that are merciful. Happy are those that are pure in heart. This is what happiness is all about. And Jesus said in his verse 3, he said, blessed are the poor in spirit. We've learned that whenever it is I come to God. This is how you know if you're a true follower of Christ or not. It depends on your, your brokenness when you come to the Father. This is what we discovered. We talked about when my good just ain't good enough. And here, it doesn't matter how good you are. Pastor, you telling us this again? You're John Brown, right? I am. Because I'm not a performer. I'm a pastor. I'm trying to take you somewhere. My responsibility is to feed you with knowledge and understanding. And I want this to get down in your heart and in your mind. So when I come to God and I'm broken, when I come to God and I'm empty, I got to know the scripture says that my righteousness is as filthy rags. As right as I try to be, as much as I try to pray, as much as I give, as much as I serve, that does not constitute me being right with God. But what, it, what God does, God says, when you get to the place where you get empty of yourself, then that's when I can help you. Blessed are those that are poor in spirit. Verse 4 says, blessed are they that mourn. They that mourn, for they shall be comforted. One of my favorite ones, because he gave me a promise that when I'm mourning, he promised me he will comfort me. We establish where do broken hearts go, because my heart is broke. Come on, if you live this life any longer than a New York second, your heart will be broke. You will have this disappointments but where do the broken heart go I am to go to the master because he told me he will comfort me in verse 5 we unpack that blessed are the meat for they shall inherit the earth the meat meekness is not weakness and we discover that we have to learn how to buck the system because the system is set up in a way that the more prideful I am that's the more notoriety I got the more followers I got the more likes and shares I got that constitute me being Mr. Muchy such it but no we're going to break this world system and I'm going to be meek I'm going to have strength under control and I'm going to buck the system and do things God's way verse 6 says blessed are they those who hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall be satisfied. We establish the hunger games. Lord have mercy. The fact that we have to understand that it doesn't matter what you're chasing after. Doesn't matter what you're fiending for. Doesn't matter what you're longing for. Nothing can satisfy you like Jesus Christ. I heard grandma say, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. And that's what God tried to get us to the place where we understand that nothing can satisfy us the way that he satisfies us. Verse 7 says, bless are the merciful for they shall receive mercy oh we had to understand because of the fact that we have received the mercy of God because of the fact that God has extended his love when we were yet without strength in due time he died for us and because we extended his he extended his mercy to us we in turn are going to extend mercy to others and but you hurt my feelings but I'm upset with you but I'm mad but will you just excuse me while I get out of my feelings I'm gonna get out of my feelings for a moment and I'm going to extend the mercy of God the same mercy that I want, the same mercy I'm looking for, I'm going to get out of my feelings and I'm going to give it to you. Oh, verse number eight. Last week we said, blessed are the pure. We're going somewhere, y'all. I just can't just be rolling. I'm not an evangelist. Come on. I, I'm a, this, is my, this is my church. I got I to plow the field. You know, this is where, this where we're going somewhere. Last week we talked about blessed are the pure, the pure, the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And so oftentimes individuals' heart are not pure towards the things of God. And because when my heart is not pure, unfortunately, uh, oftentimes we flatline. Oftentimes we flatline, meaning that we are not being intentional with our walk with God. So as we're looking at all of these things, as we're looking at what God desires to do in our lives, it, it, it brings us to verse number verse number nine, because all of these things, they come together. They come together. And I'll come back to the pure in heart in just a second. Verse nine says, blessed are the peacemakers. Oh, for they shall be called the sons of God. It, it is a progression here. And I keep telling you this, you can't skip past step one, two, and three, but no, you got to go through this all and Jesus so so masterfully taught this and he is telling us not so much we need to do this to come into the kingdom but this is what we need to exemplify because we're in the kingdom and God has impressed on my heart to even slow down and I've been going back through this and been putting out videos and putting out teachings about these beatitudes because one thing that we have to all agree upon if there's an area that we're missing in the 2021 people of God body of Christ 
it, it is our character. And come on, we talk about the world. We talk about how they talk about us. They say church folk ain't nothing. Y'all a bunch of hypocrites. You going down that church, giving that man all that, all your money. You doing all that I can have. I can serve God by myself. I, I don't need nobody. And here, that, 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 that's a partial truth. But the reason why they feel that way is oftentimes because of what they seen from us. Come on here. Oftentimes of what we've exemplified. Oftentimes because we talk out of both sides of our neck. Oftentimes because we say we love the Lord, but then we cuss them out in a New York second here. I have to learn that God is calling for us to model, to exemplify, to let our light so shine that where he'll be able to get the glory in heaven. And so what God is telling us through the writer of Matthew, Matthew is a recording for us, literally the message of the Savior. And how when we are committed to being peacemakers, Lord have mercy, we then become the children of God. Let me say it to you plainly. I'm just trying to tell you that God has given us a mandate to being committed to being peacemakers. But listen to me very closely. You're not going to be able to be a peacemaker if you have not taken care of all these other steps in the meantime. You'll see in the moment what's peacemaker. So glad y'all shot so attentive. I'm so glad y'all danced earlier. I'm so glad y'all ran in the book. And I'm so glad y'all told the club up. Oh, Oh, because you might not dance if ain't not dance anymore. So here you better get in. If you get a spot where you can be able to say hi, you better get in because that might be your only spot there today. Can I tell you? Can I tell you? That? Let me explain to you what, what peacemaker. Peacemaker is a mediator. Peacemaker is, is who? A mediator who tries to bring about harmonious relations. I love that word. Harmonious relations between two opposing parties to endeavor to reconcile. Literally, it means a reconciler to make peace. A peacemaker listen to this, is an ambassador who brings about peace. This is what Jesus is speaking about. He's not speaking about having peace with God. Come on, we've experienced peace with God when we come into the family of God. And he's not even speaking about necessarily the peace of God. We'll talk about that in a moment. The peace of God is what God will give us in the midst of our circumstances, in the midst of our dilemmas. But what Jesus is speaking to, he's saying because I've received, watch me now, because I've receive the peace from God and because I have the peace of God I can take what I have and I can take it to everybody around me and now I'm a peacemaker that that word that word that word in Hebrew literally means shalom it's shalom and it literally means behold that we have nothing missing nothing is broken and that's what God is desiring to do in and through our life he said I am to make I'm to make some peace I'm to make some peace so but, but what, what is it that we encounter what is it that we go through why is it that we don't have peace in our life why is it that there are so many different parties that need to be reconciled. Why is it that people can stand at the altar and say to have and to hold, to keep the only unto her as long as we both shall live, but there is not peace in the home. How is it that people can go to the same church, come on, sing on the same praise scene, come on, preach in the same pulpit, come on, serve in the same auxiliary, but then it don't be any peace in our relationships. How is it? It's because of this word called conflict. It's because conflict. Conflicts are, are disagreements. Conflicts are struggles. Conflicts are battles over opposing issues or principles. Conflicts. Somebody say conflicts. This is why there's no peace on your job. Come on. You head into work tomorrow and you can't stand it. You mad on your way there. Oh, because of that girl that's sitting next to you. Because of him. Because of her. Because of them. And if you're real mad, because of it. Come on here. It's because of conflict. Because of disagreements and struggles. Oh, I love this Latin word. I just like saying it. Conflutias. Hallelujah. Conflutias. It is the acting. You saw that? Conflutia. That ain't what it say. Don't be doing me like that, Miss English teacher. Let me say it the way I want to say it. Conflictiata. Come on here. It is a, it's a, it's a Latin for acting. <laughs> the act of striking together or clashing with. This is where this is why there's no peace. Because we we are we're striking against one another. We're acting against one another. We're literally acting this out. And one more time in the, in the Greek, look what it says. Conflict is literally, it, it's a word that we get. Our word, agony. Hmm. This, is a, this, this, this is the problem if we were to describe some of our relationships. We describe our relationships 
as agony. Lord have mercy. That, 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 that this is a problem with, with the society. This is a problem even with the church. It's a problem with our marriage. This is a problem everywhere because we as being the people of God are not doing what it is that God has called us to do. And because of that, the result of that, we are, we are in pain. We are in conflict. We, we are agonizing over even talking to somebody. How is it? Can we just agonize over just being around? This is where we seclude and we pull off and we peel back and we say, I don't do people. I don't want to talk to nobody because we been hurt and we've been offended but here God didn't call us to be secluded God didn't call us to be in a monastery somewhere but God left us in this world not to be a part of the world but know that we can turn this world upside down we can turn we can turn it around yeah, 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 we can. I told my wife this morning, I said, baby, I've been reading the book about you. I've been reading the book about you this morning. And, and she said, oh, I know it's sweet. I know it's sweet. Uh, so I want to talk to you about this book real quick. It's simply called Dealing with People You Can't Stand. Hmm. And then she, then she said, I almost hit you. I almost hit you. I, I said, <laughs> we kid around like that. We joke, we joke like that. One, 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 just a very interesting book, very interesting read. That one, of our, one of our servant kings was, was reading this about a year or so ago. And, um, and I, was very, I was very intrigued because they, they, you know, they serve and they love everybody and they always asking everybody for their perspective. And then they reading the book about dealing with people you can't stand. And I was trying to figure out what, what they were trying to say about, about, about me. That's what I was really trying to figure out. <laughs> but, but no, it's a, very, it's, a, it's, a very, it's a very interesting book that is penned by these two doctors. And, and of course, both of their names are Dr. Rick. Dr. Rick and Dr. Rick. It's very, it's very good. And I believe, I believe this, is, this is very appropriate. And it's really funny. It's really funny when you begin looking at some of these because the, the Dr. Rick and Dr. Rick, they really explain that how people that you can't stand, those are difficult people who either not doing things things you want them to do or they are doing things that you that you don't want them to do uh, and and they're doing it they're either doing they're either doing things that you that they you don't want them to do or they're doing things that they're not doing things that you want them to do come on let me say it one more again i'm gonna get third times a charm come on let me tell you they're either doing things that you don't want them to do or they're not doing things that you desire for them to do these are difficult people and here he describes in the book it's so humorous to me he describes the 10 most unwanted people the 10 most unwanted wanted people. I don't know. Maybe maybe you can identify. Maybe somebody in your family. Maybe somebody on your job. Maybe you've encountered some of these people before. Uh, but it's, it's very intriguing. The first person described is called the tank. The tank. The tank is the individual that, that is not tank head. <laughs> no, this individual is, 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 is confrontational. They're very pointed and angry. And, and, they're, they're, and the, ultimate, they're the ultimate in pushy and aggressive behavior. He calls them the tank. They just, they just seek and destroy. They just try. They just got to say what they got to say. And they're going to say it how they're going to say it. And, they're gonna, and, they, and they don't care how you take it. They, 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 he called them the tank. Then, then the second he described the, the sniper. The sniper. The sniper. Uh, wh wh whether, whether through rude comments or biting sarcasm or well-timed roll of eyes. Oh, come on. Some of y'all are anointed to roll your eyes. I told my daughter Shari I said girl how you roll your eyes and bat them she did one move one day she rolled them and bat them and did something else. I was like what that is that's an art to that but here the sniper it has well time rolling up somebody just rolled your eyes at me right there come on I see you on Facebook Twitter Instagram y'all rolling your, you gonna roll your eyes at me okay I got you they gonna get stuck though mama said they gonna get stuck like that too look ma making you look the sniper making you look foolish is the sniper's special speciality. That's it. They specialize in making you look foolish. Little, little sly little comments, little rude comments, and they wait for the right time just to, just to pick apart what it is that you're saying because they want you to be rude. Then he talks about the grenade. Lord have mercy. Maybe, maybe you got two cousins that, 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 that identify as a grenade. At the brief period of calm, he describes the grenade as the grenade explodes into unfocused ranting and raving about that that has no nothing to do with the present circumstances they just they just waiting on the opportunity to drop a bomb come on something could have been going on over here and they coming way over here to just to say something they don't got nothing to do with anything oh come on i'm just talking about your cousin i'm not talking about none nobody here i'm just talking about the cousin uh the the, the know-it-all the know-it-all the know-it-all we're talking about the 10 most unwanted individuals we got to deal with the know-it-all seldom in doubt he describes the know-it-all has a low tolerance for correction if, if something goes wrong, however, the know-it-all will speak with the same authority about who's to blame, and that's you. That's the know-it-all. The know-it-all. Oh, 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 I love this one. The think they know it all. The think they know it all can't fool all the people all the time. 
but they can fool some of the people enough of the time. And enough of the people all the time are for the sake of getting some attention. They think they know it all. They don't know what in the world they're talking about, but they're talking about it. And they're talking about it with so much passion, so much vigor, and so much, so much, so much. And, so, and they don't know what they're talking about. That's the thing. They think they know it all. Or the yes person. The yes person. We're just talking about peacemakers. The, 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 the yes person is that they describe is in an effort to please people and avoid confrontation. Yes, people say yes without thinking things through. They, they react to the, to the latest demands. Listen to me closely. To the latest demands of their time, forgetting their prior commitments. And they overcommit until they have no time for themselves and they become very resentful. The yes, the yes person. The, come on, well, maybe you're cousin, cousin them. Cousin, cousin. The, the, the maybe person. The, may, the maybe person. The maybe person in the moment of decision. The maybe person procrastinates in the hope that a better choice will present itself. Sadly, with most decisions, there, there comes a point when it's too little and too late, and the decision makes themselves. They're just waiting on the perfect time to make a move, and they never make a move. Oh, how about the nothing person? The nothing person, they give you no verbal feedback, no nonverbal feedback, nothing. What else could you expect from them is nothing. There's, a, there's just a nothing person. What, what you think about? Nothing. What's wrong? Nothing. What's, a, what, what, what's your goals, aspiration? Nothing. I don't have, they, that's, a, that's a nothing. The nothing person. Oh, oh, the one I love being around, the whiner. The whiner. whiner. Whiners feel helpless and overwhelmed by an unfair world. Their standard is perfection, and no one and nothing measures up to it. But, but misery loves company, so the whiner brings their problems to you. Offering solutions, listen to me closely, offering solutions to the whiner makes you bad company. And so they whine and escalates and go to another, another level. The, oh, how about the no person? We're getting somewhere. The no person, the more deadly, the, the more deadly to more morale than a speeding bullet. The more, the, come on, the, the no person, the no, no. More powerful, more powerful than hope. No. Able to defeat big ideas with a single syllable. No. Come on. <laughs> it, it doesn't matter what you say, how you say it, what you do. No. I'm not with it. No. No, no, no. The no, the no person. Oh, how about the judge? The judge sets standards that no one can meet, then pronounces judgment along with a running commentary of criticism. The judge, here, this book, I told you, it's a, it's a delightful read, and it's funny as you kind of expound on these different types of personalities, and here at the end of the day, the, the writers, they, they conclude you either have, you have four choices when you're dealing with people you can't stand. You have four choices. First choice, they say, you, you can stay and do nothing. Number two, he says, you can, you can vote with your feet. Meaning when you're dealing with individuals as this, that you just can't stand, you vote with your feet and you just leave their presence. Number three, see, don't, don't, don't shout on that. This time. I feel that. Hey, Amen. That's it. That's my, that's my word right there. You better, better get the end of the matter. Get the end of the message. Better, better, get, better get done. I need that strong amen when I get down. To, it's going to go from an amen to an amen. Come on. Amen. I need, I need that same strong amen. Uh, for, <laughs> you can change your attitude about difficult people. Or number four, they say you can change your behavior. These are these are these are individuals when you when you're dealing with people that you can't stand. So as I'm as I'm as I'm meandering to our message and trying to get to say what it is, what it is that God put on our heart, there is so I think all of us will agree that there are so many conflicts in the world and there are so many difficult people in the world. And so it's our responsibility as being the people of God, not just to diagnose them, not just to be able to get to the point, y'all can take that down, not just whenever it is we get to the point to where we're just seeing what it is and scanning the landscape to see what it is that individuals are doing and how they're acting but it's our responsibility to try to get to the root of the issue and sure we can we can try to psychologize it all we can try to we can try to diagnose it and do all of that but I believe we ought to get down to the root of the issue because the scripture tells us in detail what is going on James chapter 4 verse 1 says what what causes quarrels what causes us not to be able to get along what causes fights among you oh this is what James is saying what what is it what what causes this what caught you you're fighting amongst one another there's a war going on so we, we we understand we got conflict number one we got conflict with one another we have conflict with one another this is why we, we say we got people we can't stand this is why we got people that we don't do because that we are uh, we have conflict one with another James go further in verse one again it says is it not this look what he says he diagnosed he says he said this he said that your passions are at war within you 
James says you're having conflict with one another. Number two, because conflict is within you. Come on, watch me. James, James says that you're having conflict with one another because you have conflict on the inside of you. And oh, verse 2, he says your desire and you, you desire and you do not have. So you murder, you covet, and you cannot obtain. So you fight and quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. Verse 3 said you quarrel, you ask, and you do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passion. James said because there's something in you that what you're not able to attain. There's something in you that you desire. There's something in you that you want. You want to get a status. You want a relationship. You want some goal. You got goals that you're trying to obtain. And because you're not able to do what it is that you're trying to do, you're bitter down on the inside. And it caused you to conflict with one another. But the ultimate, the ultimate thing that we need to look at is verse number four. He said, you adulterous people, do you, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? In other words, the third conflict and the ultimate conflict is conflict with God. So we, we fight with one another because we're fighting within ourselves and we're fighting within ourselves ourselves because we're fighting with him Lord have mercy whenever it is that I'm not walking according to his will and his purposes and his will I'm always fighting against God somebody say oh no not me preacher I love the Lord with all my heart mind soul strength and understanding anytime I'm not going and walking according to his will and his word and his way I'm, I'm walking away and I'm against him I'm over and against God's plan and I have to understand that this is why individuals have, this is why we have so much conflict this is why we have people that we categorize and say I can't stand I don't want to be around them I can't do them oh because peace can only flow from a heart of purity Oh, you preaching this gospel, sir. I said peace can only flow from a heart of purity. If I'm going to be a peacemaker, it can only come from a posture of purity, the kind of peace that God talks about. Oh, no, not this old superficial peace. Well, we're going to unpack it today. Not superficial peace, but holistic peace. This peace that God desires for us to bring to every situation, it can only flow from a heart that is pure. What does that sound? That sounds very familiar, heart that is pure. Verse 8 says, bless are the pure in heart for they shall see God you see the progression there you see you can't have one without the other come on this is what this is where the progression is and you see my staircase there we're blessed are those that are poor blessed are those that mourn blessed are those that are mean blessed are those that hunger and thirst at the righteousness blessed are the merciful blessed are the pure in heart and when my heart is pure then I can bring about some peace but I can't bring about no peace when I'm in conflict with myself I I can't get along with you because I'm in conflict with myself. I'm in conflict with myself because I'm in conflict with God. Oh, but when I'm in peace, when I made peace with him, when I just don't have peace with God, but I'm walking in the peace of God, then I'll be able to do what I need to do. Let me get let me get up out of here. I'm trying to tell you that peace, peace is not the peace is not the stuff that we manufacture. But let me tell you what, what peacemakers, oh my God. Oh, I'm trying to tell you that peacemakers, peacemakers are people who bring peace to others. Because they themselves have it. This is what this is what peacemaker. A peacemaker are people who bring peace to others because they have it themselves. I can't bring you something I don't have. I, I, I can't I can't I can't try to I, come on I, I I feel real I feel real crazy trying to straighten your marriage when when we when I just signed divorce papers come on here I'll be real, I, I, I'm trying to tell you what to do with your bills I'm trying to tell you to do with your money come on here and I'm dodging the rent man come on here but no in order in order for us to we got to have it in order for us to be able to give it so peacemakers bring peace because they have it themselves look what Isaiah 57 and 21 said there there is no peace listen to me closely says my God for the wicked. This is what's going on in our world. This is what's going on on our job. We, we expect people, listen to me so, so closely, and I, this helped me when, when God gave me this revelation years ago, this helped me. I'm expecting unsaved people to do something that I only can do because I know Jesus. Y'all missed what I just said. I, I, I'm putting a standard on people that the only reason why I'm keeping the stand, only reason why I'm not cussing you out, only reason why I'm not being vindictive and mean and nasty and all that because of Jesus. And they don't got Jesus. And I'm holding them to the same standard that I'm barely keeping myself. <laughs> it's been on what day of the week you catch me on. <laughs> 
And I want to hold you to a same standard. No, we got to understand that they don't know. We don't judge them. We don't look down on them. I don't have a heaven to take you to. I don't have a hell to send you to. But I got to have an understanding. God has given me an understanding. God has given me some insight that, son, it's because of the grace of God that's on your life. Son, it's because of what I've done. It's because of the understanding that you have. It's the only reason why you don't act like they act. But then here it is. We be so pulling our hair out. And we be so old and so, so bothered and so frustrated with people who can't do what it is that you can do because you have the power of God, the spirit of God residing on the inside of you. But peace, peace don't come to the wicked. If they don't know God, they don't have peace. I don't care how much money they got. I don't care who they got on their arm. I don't care where they go. I don't care where they live. I don't care how many, na- how many letters behind their name. They have more degrees than a thermometer. But if they don't have, the, if they're not a Christian, if they not, don't put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, oh, they can never experience the kind of peace that we have. And Jesus tells us so oftentimes that when, we, when, we, when we're trying to be peacemakers, and Jesus, and, and this is our mindset, because we, got to, we, got to, we have to have the, the posture to know whenever I show up because I'm a child of God, there's going to be some conflict. If I'm a child of God and I'm walking in the things of God, there's going to be some conflict. You, you don't believe me, do you? Look what Jesus said in Matthew 10, 34. Look what the Prince of Peace said. The Prince of Peace said, do, do, do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. But Jesus, the day you was born, the angels in heaven said, peace on earth, goodwill to all men. But, but you're the prince of peace. <laughs> he said, I ain't come to bring peace. What is he saying? He's not saying that he comes to test something up. He's not saying he come to bring about div- div- division the way that we think about division. He's saying, because I am who I am, it's going to be an automatic contradiction to the climate. Because I'm a child of God, because I show up, because I'm following God, because I'm putting my faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, because I don't have the same values and the same morals that the world do. When I show up, it's an automatic contradiction. Oh, come on. Have you ever been there before? People trying to talk you into doing something? And you say, no, I don't do that. You're not trying to press the issue. You're not trying to be judgmental. But they keep on saying, why you don't do that? What's wrong with that? No, I don't do that. No, I don't don't play those games because I'm a child of God. And that's an automatic contradiction. You're going to bring a separation. Anybody ever got saved before? Oh, I pray you have and you have some friends and they're trying to get you to smoke one, drink one. Come on, they're trying to get you to do something. Say, no, I don't do that. that oh, oh, you think you better than me now. Now all of a sudden they're saying you better than me. Oh, now you this and that. It's an automatic separation when I'm walking in the things of God. And Jesus said, I did not come. I did not come. So this is not the kind of peacemaking we're talking about. We're not talking about peacemaking just to the place the way you just, you just doing whatever just to get along with people. That's not peacemaking. Oh, we'll never be able to obtain the missing piece. Come on, let me hurry. We'll never be able to obtain the missing piece when we are constantly avoiding. So, some of us claim we keep in peace and all we're doing is avoiding. All we are is an anointed Barry Sanders. In my, in my estimation, Barry Sanders is the greatest running back ever in the history. I know I got Jim Brown. I know y'all like Emmett and all that stuff. But Barry Sanders would be able to order me that. I mean, remind me of me out down that field. I say, Barry, you remind, you remind me of me. Uh, uh, just elusive. And that's how some of us, some of us said, we need to talk. Ooh. We need to talk. That's just a, that's a, that's a, that's in that footwork. Don't play with it. Now, see that footwork? They got it now. Just, we That's avoiding. We claim we keep in peace, but we just avoiding folk. We avoid conversation. We and we'll say this: I don't like confrontation. I don't want to be confront. I'm non-confrontational. But let me tell you what they did. I'm non-confrontational. Good morning. Hmm. This is a person talk. Good morning. Hmm. Hey, how you doing? With your non-confrontational self. Confrontation all in your heart. Confrontation is all in your mind. Come on, where my married folk at? Anybody ever hit a hot button issue in your marriage? And you're like, I ain't talking about that. No, I won't be bringing that up no more. Come on here. There's no, there's no, there's no resolve. There's, come on, we still talking about the bills. We still talking about the money. We, we bring it up. I'm tired of talking about the money. I work hard. I'm a grown man. I'm gonna ask you for no allowance. I said I will not pay my. I got. I work. I don't. Know. And so you like, okay, I won't talk about that anymore. Anybody ever been disciplining the kids? <laughs> and your spouse thought you was a little too rough, a little too soft, a little too whatever? Well, I, won't, well, I just won't say nothing to them no more. <laughs> kids, tan the house up. You. <laughs> baby, baby. No, nah, you told me not to say nothing. Last time I said something, you had a problem with it. 
Y'all just act uh, yeah, like y'all live in perfect people, perfect peopleville, I guess. <laughs> just avoiding, just avoiding it. And so many of us in our relationships, we just avoid it. We don't bring about a resolve, we just avoid it. Come on, people of God. And we just avoid. Let me keep on going. Y'all don't like me. I'm glad y'all. All night. I'm so glad y'all dance. Cause now y'all saying ooh ee ooh ah ah. Be man. Walla walla be man. Ooh. Let me get out of here. Look. The clock on my back. I got to go. We'll never be able to obtain the missing piece when we're constantly appeasing. Just as bad as avoiding, just appeasing, just saying whatever they keep, they keep the house. I, 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 I'm going to say whatever I got to say. Come on, husbands. I ain't going to say nothing. I'm not going to ruffle the feathers. What you think, baby? Whatever you think, sweetheart. What you want to eat, baby? Whatever you want, sweetheart. Where you want to go? Wherever you want to go, baby. Come on, y'all go talk to me here. <laughs> y'all go talk to me here. Whatever, keep the peace. But that is not, that's not, uh, appeasing is not being a peacemaker. Appeasing, look what it means. Literally, appeasing is to pacify. Appeasing is just to cause to subside, to buy off an aggressor by, by, con, by concessions. Usually, look at this, usually at the sacrifice of principles. When I just appease people, we say, well, I just, I just want to keep the peace. No, it's not about keeping peace. It's about being tactful and about being intentional about having conversations with people. So every time this comes up, we don't have to come here. I, I tell my wife all the time, my wife, my wife been burn now. My wife can burn. She, she can cook. She do the, she do the oxtails and mac and cheese and candied yams and all that kind of stuff. But one time, she, one time she stepped down and she made some Ritz, the Ritz Bits casserole. I ate it. And I ate it. And then when we got, when I got done with that thing, I said, now, baby. Don't you ever in your life try that again? Come on, she she trying she trying. But what we do, we just we just sit there and we just sit up there. I'm not gonna be eating this stuff for ten years talking about it's good. I'm not gonna she just, I'm not I'm not gonna sit here and stomach this down. Come on, that, that's that one, that's that one, just that one. That was that one, but everything else. Now she keep she make that steak low. Come on, they cheese that it's meat low, but it tastes like a filet mignon. And I say, baby, can I chase it down with a little Dom Perignon? Kind of get that, that that steak low. But my point is this, I'm just using that, as a, I'm using that as an example. Most of us just sit there and don't say anything. And then all along, we've got this built up resentment. Y'all don't like this today. Y'all just think I just fell off a truck, turnip truck or something here. Can I tell you that no God, God tells us that we just don't appease. We don't, that's, not, that's not what we're supposed to be doing. Look at this. We'll never be able to obtain the missing piece. Come on, let me hurry. When we're constantly apologizing, look at it, only. Some of us, some of us we got need you. I'm sorry. I apologize. I'm, t- I'm so sorry, baby. I apologize. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Mama say, I know you're sorry. Be something else. In other words, just apologizing and not changing is not doing anything. Oh, and, and in my favor, let me hurry. I got the clock on my back. Let me hurry. We, we never, we're never able to obtain the missing piece when we're constantly over-spiritualize the problem. Here's, here's, my, here's my favorite one. The Lord told me to do it. Oh, boy, we some slick saints, boy. When we don't want to do something, boy, the Lord, I feel like the Lord has been pressing on my spirit. God told me to do it. God told me to buy it. God didn't tell you to buy that. It's going to tear your house up. God didn't tell you to say that and you know that's going to run your husband crazy. God didn't tell you to do that when you know that's get on your wife's last nerve. But the Lord told me to do it. Over-spiritualizing. All righty then. All righty then. All right. Let me, let me get out of here. Let me give you some Bible. Let me give you some Bible. Let me give you some Bible. Jeremiah 6 and 4 says, look, look, what, look what God says. Prepare war against her. Look at this. And let us attack at noon. Hmm. That's not my right verse. I need verse 14. That's not, I'm like, what is that? I need Jeremiah 6, 14. That's why I still got my leaves up here. Now, I don't let this stuff up because it's a typo. I didn't put the one in front of the four. That's all that is. Jeremiah, Isaiah. Isaiah's right behind Jeremiah. I got my Bible right here. I don't know. It's okay. It's all right. There's a little typo. I'm good, y'all. I'll put it on there. Jeremiah. Oh, they, they fix it for me? It's on there now? No, that's not the right one. That's the one that's coming up next. That's next. That's the message paraphrase. I want English Standard Version. I got it. I got it. All right. It's right here. Verse 14. English Standard. They, there it is. They have healed. I'm coming there, though. We can take it down for a second. I'm coming there, but it's right here. English Standard. It says, they have healed the wound of my people. Come on. Look at it. They have healed, listen to it rather. They have healed the wound of my people lightly. Look what it says. Saying, here, listen, don't miss this. Saying, peace, peace. 
when there is no peace. This is what God is saying. God is rebuking the people of God because here they're saying that it's peace. They're saying everything is good. All is well when it's not well. They're saying everything is okay when it's not okay. They're just saying peace, peace. Let me break it down another further. Now give it to me in the message paraphrase. It said my people are broken. They're shattered and they just put on band-aids. Saying it's not so bad. They'll, they'll be just fine. But things are not just fine. In other words, some of us saying, oh, I'm doing good. I'm okay. We do this in our marriages. We do this in our home. We say, oh, I'm good. Oh, I'm okay. Nothing wrong. Nothing wrong. We just sit because I don't want to start. Nothing. I don't want to. And all we're doing is band-aiding the problem, saying peace, peace. That's what Jeremiah said. You're just saying peace, peace when there is no peace. And so oftentimes we do this when we, when we walk through relationships and we have even our attitude with God. We, we're walking around with an attitude with God. Because things aren't going the way they want. We're still going through all the, all the motions. But yet and still, we're, we're not flowing the way that God desires us to do. But here, let me tell you about the attitudes of a peacemaker. Let me run through this. What the attitudes of a peacemaker is this. A peacemaker knows that they could have handled things better. <coughs> I want to talk to you about a peacemaker. Regardless of, you could, you, could be, you could be 99% wrong. Let me talk about a peacemaker. You could be 99% right. But when an individual is hurt or offended, a peacemaker has an attitude to say, you know what, I could have handled it better. I'm not going to say that I, that I was wrong because I wasn't wrong. I'm 99% right. But you know what, I could have handled it better. That's maturity. But some of us are so stuck on ourselves, we can't, even, we can't even find no wrong. We can't even find even our reaction. But I'm going to act like that because of what you said. I only did that because if you would have did that, I wouldn't have did that. No, that's not how pe- the attitude of a peacemaker said no matter what has happened, you know what, I could have handled things better. Maybe I shouldn't have responded that way. Maybe it wasn't the right time for me to bring that up. Maybe I wasn't in the right space. This is how I deal. This is why I mean, that's why I deal with conflicts. That's how I deal with individuals. Because here, I, I, don't, I don't always got to be right. I can find even some wrong or some fault. I can find something that, hey, I could have did things better. But at the end of the day, let's still deal with the issue. Let me keep on going. Oh, Proverbs 13, 10 says, pride leads to conflict. Those who take advice are wise. Pride leads to conflict. And when you can't never, this is speaking to the person that's never wrong about nothing. You can't even see what you did in the situation. You can only see your side. You only see your feelings. You didn't, you wasn't there. You don't know how that made me feel. No, I'm not. I didn't do anything wrong. I'll never apologize. I'll never say I'm sorry. No, because you shouldn't never did what you did when you did it. But maturity says, you know what? I could have did things better. All righty then. Let me get out of here. All right. Uh, so so I, I need to be able to be honest. I need to be able to be honest with the situation. Be, being real. We'll deal. I'm not telling you to brush your hurt under the table. All I'm saying is for reconciliation, put your hurt on the shelf until we're reconciled, and then we'll deal with our hurt. Oh, come on. I'm talking to my married folk and people want to want to want to do things right. That's all I'm saying is it, it, it's always come on. We, we'll tear a whole house up because you hurt my feelings. Yeah. We're going to deal with my feelings in a second. And my, we, we, it's, it's taking us some time to get there. Now we got we got 16 years on the book just for nothing. Now, you know, we take some time to get there. And what we know is like, come on, I want to talk about right now. Yeah, come on, baby, let's talk. I want to talk about what I want to talk about right now. Anybody ever got a go on now? Come on here. Anytime you get a go on now, go on now, go on now. You need to take your go on now, and I've learned to take my go on now. Or I'll be like, nah, it's not, not a good. I, I, I can know when I'm not ready to deal with something. Like, okay. be like, no, I'm good. Let's just deal with it later. Let's talk about it later. But no, no, let's talk about it now. I'm talking about Six hours later. The whole house tore up because you just got to get just got to get your point across. Y'all don't like this one. It's okay though, but I'm get I'm getting on. I got I got to be able to I got to get my here. You know why our feelings are so hurt because of our ego. The proverb writer says where pride is, there's conflict. Here's, this is how Jesus told us to deal with situations. Matthew seven and three. He says, Why do you seek peace? That is, he said, Why do you why do you seek the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Jesus said, how is, it that you, how is it that you keep on calling me out about something and you got this big old log in your eye, but none of us know I don't never, got, I don't never, I don't never do anything. I ain't said nothing. I don't see how you said it. I don't, see how, I don't see how you did it like that. I don't understand anything. Oh, man, y'all. Verse 5. I'm going to get out of here. Matthew 7 and 5 said, you hypocrite. 
First take the log out of your own eye. Then see, you'll be able to see clearly. And he said, take a speck out of your brother's eye. Lord, have mercy. Come on, just take, take a moment and digress. Take a moment and look at the situation. Oh, maybe because maybe this bothers you. Maybe I'm being unrealistic right now. Maybe I'm being insensitive right now. Maybe I'm being oversensitive right now. Maybe I'm being ungrateful right now. Oh, but the peacemaker has an attitude. Maybe I could have did things differently. Oh, a peacemaker has self-control. Somebody say self-control. Oh, you can't be a peacemaker and you don't have no self-control. Oh, James 1.19 said, know this, my brothers, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear, be slow to speak, and slow to anger. It speaks to self-control. Lord have mercy. Let me talk to you about the actions of a peacemaker. Oh, peacemakers, this is going to bless you. Peacemakers play offense. Peacemakers play offense. Peacemakers make the first move. Peacemakers don't run from trouble, avoid trouble, appease trouble. Peacemakers go to the trouble. I ain't saying nothing until they say something to me. I ain't saying nothing. I ain't gonna, nope, I ain't, I ain't, nope, you ain't saying nothing about it. I ain't gonna say, hey, how you gonna be married in the house and you in the marriage for how, and y'all don't talk in five years? Y'all don't turn into glorified roommates. And here, I ain't saying nothing. You wanna say he's sorry? I ain't saying nothing. You still cooking, still doing all this, still doing, but won't, won't sit down and deal with the conflict. But peacemakers play offense. Let me get out of here. Lord have mercy. Y'all not going to invite me back. Y'all are not going to invite me back. Can I tell you here that Mark eleven twenty five says, Mark eleven twenty five. look what it says. And whenever you stand praying, look how God is so serious about us playing offense. He said, whenever you stand praying, you praying, you worshiping me. If you have anything against anyone, forgive him and let it drop. What it says, leave it, let it go. In order that your father who is in heaven also forgive you your own failings and shortcomings, let them drop. He said, if, you got a, if you're standing in front of me and you got something against your brother, he said, get that right before you come talk to me. God is so serious about playing offense. So I hear you. I don't got a problem with nobody. They don't like me because I'm who I am. Because the anointing on my life. Because I'm, I'm bold and beautiful. And they don't like me. Okay, I got, a, I got a scripture for you too. Come on, get your pen out. Come on, get, get your pen. Come on, can you share before you go? You're going to go. Get this verse real quick and get it to your cousin. And hurry up. Look, look at Matthew 5 because you, you don't bother nobody. Ain't there, everybody just got a problem with you. Look at Matthew 5, 23. So if you are offering your gift at the altar... And, and there, and th while you're there offering your gift, and remember that your brother has something against you. You don't got a problem. They got the problem. But as you're at the altar with your gift, look what he says, verse 24, leave your gift. He didn't say take the offering now. He said, he said, he said leave, the, the, you, ought, you, ought, you ought to touch your neighbor. <laughs> you ought to leave, leave the gift now. He says, Either leave the gift there before you, before you before the altar and go and go. Get, God said, get out of my presence and go get it right. First be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. He said, in other words, he said, you, you come and you worshiping me. You come and you honor me. What good is you singing all these songs, preaching all these messages? You doing whatever you do in the kingdom of God. What good is that? And here it is. You got hatred in your heart. You can't stand one another. He says, God said, a peacemaker plays offense. I can't come on that way. We, we practice in our home. And I know I'm being relational today because it's about relationship. We're in our home. I can do something, say something, get smart or get just a way I say and my wife had to teach me this I said well I'm saying I'm not cussing you out I'm not slamming doors I'm not doing any of that she said Kobe you got a look that can cut that can cut right through you don't got to say anything but the way you look and the way you just cut your eye oh come on y'all to go talk to me here and I'm like because I and that's why I'm, I'm standing on that I ain't cussed at you I ain't doing none of that but what's your problem here all I did was look at you she said that's the problem that's that look and so I had to learn that I can't be around here trying to do trying to work for God and here it is I'm doing things against the word of God. Y'all ain't gonna help me talk in here. Oh, and we wonder, we wonder where the missing piece is. Let me get out of here. Y'all don't like me, but here, look what this man of God said. I'm gonna invite him next Sunday. Look at this man of God say, maturity is knowing that I can't be right with God, but wrong with you. And clap a clap. Some more claps. They're spattering there. Okay, there we go. Fatty cake, fatty cake. man. Maturity. I should have put somebody else's name on there. Y'all have like, ooh, yeah, that's good. <laughs> maturity is knowing that I can't be right with God and wrong with you. That's what maturity is. 
1 John 4, 20 says, If anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he's a liar. For he does not love his brother whom he has seen and cannot love God whom he has not seen. How in the world can you say you love the Lord with all your heart, mind, soul, strength, and you hate your brother? Somebody lying. Romans 12, 20. Oh, to the contrary, if your enemy hunger, somebody say, make the first move. I said, somebody say, make the first move. Uh, come on, uh, peacemakers play office if your enemy is hungry. Feed them. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. Oh, let me get out of here. Peacemakers, peacemakers deal with, I told you, I'm glad y'all danced. I'm glad y'all danced. I'm so glad you danced. So glad you did. Peacemakers deal with conflict early. Oh, I wish a Baptist preacher was here. He just say, peacemakers deal with com- conflict early. <laughs> it deal, deal with conflict early. Proverbs 17, 14 says, the, 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 look at this, the beginning of strife is as when waters first trickles from a crack in a dam. Therefore, stop the contention before it, be, before it becomes worse and quarreling breaks out. In other words, peacemakers deal with it early. It's just a little, it's just a little crack. It's just a little drip. It's just a little bit. It's just a little thing. Just one little, one little, one little sly comment. One, one little misunderstanding. One, one thing that may not even been a misunderstanding, but that's the way I viewed it. One little thing, but we don't deal with it. We just let it go and we just let it fester and we don't do anything with it. But the proverb writer said, deal with it early before it breaks out. Anybody ever let some things go? It don't make any sense for me to go to the doctor and the doctor says, oh, oh, you got cancer. And I said, oh, you know, time heals all wounds. And it'll get better by and by. No, no, we don't, that doesn't make any sense anywhere else. If something is wrong, the longer I wait, the worse it gets. But when it comes to my relationships in the kingdom of God, I just let it go and let it go and let it go. But no, my friend, that's not what God has called me to do. God has said, deal with it early. I'm not telling you to be a head hunter. I'm not telling you just to go and just deal with everything. Some things don't deserve your attention. Some things don't deserve your, 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 your consideration. Oh, but if it's an all, oh, if it's a wedge, if it's something coming between me and my brother, a peacemaker deals with the early and say maybe I'm misunderstanding let me give you my little trade secrets I told you this before maybe I maybe I'm misunderstanding this wrong maybe I'm seeing this wrong maybe I just didn't hear you clearly but what happened that other day that thing really kind of got to me and maybe I'm just being a little sensitive right now maybe I'm a little immature right now but you mind if we talk through this right now you see I'm putting it all on me I'm putting it all on me because we need to deal with it because I'm not going to sit up here and act like nothing ever happened and we're going to say and we're just going to not be speaking for six months and we're not going to talk to each other the devil is a lie and this is why we don't have no faith in the kingdom of God. This is why the, this is why the church looks like it's frail. It's why the church looks like it's impotent. It's why the that's why they talk about it in the world. So I'm not going in there. Oh no, but when we get it together, oh can I tell you how can two walk together except we be? Let me get out of here. Lord have mercy. I'm just talking about the Beatitudes. We'll talk about something another time later. Oh my God, whatever it is, we're in conflict. First Peter 3 7. I got the I got to rush y'all. First Peter 3 7 said, likewise, husbands, live with your wives in an understanding way. Showing honor. To the woman, to the woman as a weaker vessel. Now, I'm not better. God called a weaker. Since hell, y'all don't even like that. I ain't hear nothing. I heard Lady Dollar General again. Lady Dollar General over there. I say, this, this, this is it. No, we close. <laughs> I say, since, since, since here, here's the point I want. Since they are heirs with you in the grace of life, look at this. So that your prayers may not be hindered. God is so. I, you, you, I just read it in Matthew. I read it in Mark. If you had the altar, don't, don't, go, go get it right with your brother before you come talk to me. Look what he says here. He says, and P- Peter's telling us as, as, as husbands, dealing with our wife, I can't be nasty to my wife. I can't be nasty to my covenant partner and then expect God to hear my prayer. My prayers are being hindered. Wow. My, prayers, my prayers are being hindered. Peacemakers, listen to this. I'm getting there. Peacemakers, focus on the hurt. Hey, did I miss God on this? Did I miss God on this? Is this okay? This is a good message. Like, yeah, you know, it's all right. Like, normally, that's when y'all supposed to start clapping and stuff whenever I say something like that. But then, y'all, I guess I did because I was like, "Okay, there we go. All right, thank y'all so much." <laughs> Peace. Peacemakers focus on the hurt. Philippians two four. Let each one of you look at it. Look, look at the text. Let each of you, not only, look at this. Let each of you look not only to his own interest, but also to the interests of others. I love this because when we when we having when we having conflict, when you de- when you dealing with someone and y'all are having a misunderstanding, it's my responsibility to look 
not just in my interest, not just not to be self-absorbed, not just to be want what I want, but to look. That word look literally means to pay careful attention to. Look literally means here in the original literally means to focus. So it's something that you're saying to me that I need to be able to pay close attention to because you hurt somewhere. I don't care how they act. I don't care how mean they are, how loud they get, how much they cuss, how much they fuss. If somebody is acting like that, they're hurt. So it's my responsibility as a peacemaker to find out where the hurt is. Not to correct you, not to try to change you, not to try to prove that I'm right, but to try to find where the hurt is. All right, I hurt you when I said that. You know what? I'll never say that again. I was only thinking about myself. I apologize. Give me another chance. Will you give me another chance not to, not to go that way again? That's, I got to focus on the hurt. But we can just, we can be, just be at odds and just be mad and just act like nothing never goes on. But the Roman writer from Romans 15 too, this is topical. I'm just trying to show you how we ought to be peacemakers. He says, for we, we must bear the burden and being considerate of the doubts and the fears of others. Oh, I had to learn this. Just because, just because something doesn't bother me, I shouldn't look down on somebody else because it bothers them. But no, as a believer, the sh- strong ought to bear the infirmity of the weak because I'm a child of God. You can be all nervous about something. I said, what, what kind of guy am I? And what, what are you doing? What are you talking about? Man, you shouldn't be upset about that. That got you mad. You still talking about that. But no, as a child of God, as peacemakers, we understand we got to be able to do what we, what we, need, what we need to do. First Peter 3.11 says, let him turn away. I'm giving you scripture. You got to go back and look at these. First Peter 3. It's all in your Bible. It's sprinkled all through your Bible. Let him turn away from evil and do good. Look at this. Let them seek peace. Somebody say seek. Seek Seek means it's not easy to find. Let me seek peace and 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 pursue it. Let me get. Let me go. I'm skip that. Skip that. Peacemakers. Here it is. This is good. And I'm not even gonna read the scriptures. I'm just gonna give you the point. Peacemakers don't camp on their rights. I got the right. 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 Peacemakers don't camp on their rights. Philippians 2 talks about 2 through 7, talks about Christ. He said, let this mind be in us, was also in Christ Jesus. It speaks to the fact that Jesus emptied himself. The theologians call it the kenosis, the way he emptied of himself. He didn't hang on to his rights. He didn't hang on to his position, but he emptied himself that he can get something to us. Now, if Jesus can empty himself of his, of his power, empty himself of his omnipotence, as relates, to, as relates to his omnipresence, rather, if he can limit himself and empty himself and come and put on the body, like you and I, you mean to tell me that I can't come off of my rights? I do deserve an apology. I, I am entitled to an apology, but if you never apologize, I can't stand there forever because you won't apologize. I can't stand here forever. You may never come back. You may never come back around. You may never see it my way. But the peacemaker say, you know what? It doesn't even matter. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave off my rights. And I'm saying, if you don't never got to speak to me again, you don't never got to talk to me again, this is what I'm doing right here. Not for you. It's for me. Oh, come on here, my friend. I'm trying to tell you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Let me get out of here. Let me get out of here. Let me skip. I'm skipping. I'm skipping all the way through. I, I was going to give you all some practical things about conflict resolution. I'll give it to you another time. I, the praise team took all my time. They thought they were singing a concert or something today. I'm not exactly sure. They're going to be they're gonna be live at the Ritz on next next week or something. I'm not sure. They took all my little time, all my little time going down, going down the street. And then, then the praises came. And then the praises came. And like, every, every dance, I just saw my little time evaporating. Oh, there's another verse. Another verse. I got to go. So... Regardless of the fact that I was over there saying, go, go, come on, go, go, get it, hit it, come on, come on, come on, get it, hit it. The Bible says, look, I gotta go, I'm having time, I gotta go, I gotta go. Look, the apprehending of peace, this is good to me. We've talked about the attitudes of the peacemakers, the actions of the peacemakers. Now look at the apprehending of peace. God, one of his names is Jehovah Shalom. The Lord is peace. Look, look at how pregnant this definition is. The Lord is peace. The Lord sends peace. Look at this. With God, God's welfare, his good. Look at this. God, God's health. He, he, he's, it means wholeness. It means favor. It means perfect and full and prosperity. Jehovah Shalom. This is what God says that, that he's about. He wants this in our life. He Jehovah Shalom. Oh, the where nothing is missing and nothing is broken. God, he is the peace originator. Oh, the scripture said that God is not the author. First Corinthians 14, 33 says he's not the author of confusion. Oh, but he's the author 
of peace. He's a progenerator of peace. And God said, I desire for there to be peace, my friend. Oh, Isaiah 9 and 6 says, For unto us a child is born, oh, and unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called, what? Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. He is, oh, this is how we apprehend peace. We apprehend peace when we grab a hold of him. Oh, come on, I know that this is lofty, and I know this is challenging. This has been a challenging series. Oh, talking about all of these Beatitudes, but that's what God has called us to do. Not just to meander through life, not just to say I'm saved and I'm satisfied, but know there's some things that I need to know and some things I am to do. And if I want to apprehend peace, I got to go after him. I got to go after him with all that every ounce of strength I have. And when I get more of him, I'll get more peace. Yes, sir, I will. Galatians 5 22 says, Oh, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, the fruit of the Spirit is joy, the fruit of the Spirit is. Oh, it's peace. Come on, y'all. The fruit of the Spirit is peace. I already got it. That's all Pastor Kobe trying to tell you. I already got everything I need. When I received the Lord Jesus Christ as my Lord and my personal Savior, peace was a part of the package. I already got peace in my heart. I already got peace in my mind. Oh, Jeremiah 29 11 says, For I know all oh, the plans that I have towards you, declares the Lord. Plans of welfare. Oh, plans of peace. Oh, they give you a future and a hope. Y'all, they go help me here. I'm trying to apprehend my peace. I'm trying to be a peacemaker. When I grab a hold of him, he'll give me all the things that I need that I can be able to carry to every situation and every relationship and I can bring about some peace. Oh, somebody put your hands together. Give God some praise right there. I'm getting ready to roll up out of here. I got my plane on the runway. I see the lights are flashing. And now it's time to go. I'm getting ready to taxi up out of here. But just before I go, I want to tell you that peace, it belongs to me. And see, the missing peace is the fact when I make the Lord, when I make the Lord the Lord of my life, I don't have to have the missing peace. Nothing will be missing. Nothing will be broken. Look at Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13. It said, but now in Christ Jesus, he said, you who have once or far off have been brought near by the blood. It was the blood that brought me near to him. I can apprehend peace because of the blood. Because he spilled his blood. And I can come boldly before the throne of grace. Ephesians 2.14 said, he said, for he himself is our peace. Y'all ain't gonna help me preach in here. I say Jesus is our peace. I'm trying to tell you that because, because I apprehended him, because I got a new attitude, because now I got some new action. Now I am the ambassador, the ambassador for peace. I heard, I said I heard, I heard Jesus say in verse number nine, he said, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. They shall be called the sons of God. So how will the world know that we are Christians? How will the world know that we're children of the most high God? Because I'm a peacemaker. He said, I'm blessed. He said, I'm favored when I'm a peacemaker. And the world will say, you know, that's a child of God because they're not stuck in their feeling. You know that's a child of God because they know their good is not good enough. Can they know that's a child of God because they hungry and thirst after righteousness. Can I tell you that's a child of God because they showing mercy. The world will say that's a child of God because they're walking in mercy. They're walking in love and now they're peacemakers. I got to roll up out of here y'all. But just before I do, I heard I heard David say in Psalm 85 and 10, look at this. He says, steadfast love and faithfulness, they meet. Steadfast love and faithfulness meet. He said, righteousness and peace kiss one another. Lord have mercy, only the pure in heart shall see God. That speaks to righteousness, righteousness and peace have kissed 
kiss one another. When I'm pure in heart, I have a love affair with some peace. Y'all ain't gonna help me preaching here. He said righteousness and peace have kissed one another. So I got to learn how to walk in what I receive. Where is the missing piece? The missing piece is here. I'm doing what God have called me to do. I'm walking in love. I'm walking in peace. So I'm an ambassador. I'm an ambassador for peace. I'm not trying to get a big old title. I'm not trying for somebody to call me this and to call me that. Can I tell you that I'm an ambassador? Last time, y'all. Maybe not. But I heard... I heard Paul say in 2 Corinthians 5 18 he said all of this is from God who through Christ look at this reconciled us to himself and gave us a ministry of reconciliation will you get in your ministry come on Facebook will you get in your ministry will you do your ministry will you work the work of the one that sent you because it's the Lord that have given us a ministry it's the Lord that said I called you out to put you back in the way you can love the way you can serve the way you can give verse 19 said that is Christ God was reconciling the world to himself not counting their trespass against them but entrusting to us God has trusted us to be a messenger of reconciliation the Lord is counting on you he counting on you on that job not for you to be praying they say, God, get me off the job. But no, he's counting on you to be a minister of reconciliation. The Lord is counting on you in your marriage. Not to be mad. Not to hold a grudge. Not to bury the hatchet and leave the handle out of ground. You're going to bury the hatchet. Miss Pepper say, you can bury the hatchet, but leave the handle out of ground. But I'm going to bury the hatchet, and I'm going to be a peacemaker because the Lord have called me to let my light let my light so shine so I can give him some glory I heard I heard Jesus say, he say, peace I leave you, not as the world is given. I'm going to give you a peace that surpasses all understanding. I got peace with God, so I got the peace of God. I want some peace when my mind, my mind is racing. He'll give me a peace that just doesn't make any sense. I should be worried. I should be crying. I should be defeated. I should be depressed. I should be despondent. But I got a peace that will invade my mind. I got a peace that's going to wrap me and hold me. The world looks like it's going to hell in the handbasket. But he will keep us in perfect peace. When my mind is stayed on him. Last time for real. I heard. I heard Isaiah say, have thou not known, have thou not heard the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth, he fainted not, neither is he weary, but there that wait upon the Lord he will I feel my granddaddy y'all he will he renew our shrimp like the eagles you ought to drop down and get your eagle on he renew my shrimp like the eagle I'll be able to run and not get weary I'll be able to walk and not faint because the Lord has made me a peacemaker I got the missing piece I got the missing link. Come on, y'all, to give him some praise right there. I got it. I got the missing piece. I got it. I got the missing piece. I'm not going to avoid it. I'm not going to appease people. I'm not just going to overlook. I'm going to bring about the peace. I am, I bring my own weather with me. I'm a climate changer. I'm an atmosphere shifter. When I show up, it could be contention. It could be arguing and, and bitterness, hatred. But when I show up, I change the atmosphere. On behalf of everyone at Truth and Love Ministries, we want to thank you for joining us for our virtual worship experience. 
We want to thank you for your likes and your shares, your comments and your emojis. But we also want to invite you to partner with us as we continue to be the hands and the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. You do know that he told us that we ought to feed the hungry, we ought to clothe the naked, and we ought to be the church. And you can help us to continue to do just that through your generosity. And there are three easy, safe, and secure ways that you can do just that. You can text the word T-I-L-JAX, one word, T-I-L-JAX, to the number 77977. You can go to our website, www.truthandlove.tv, or you can go to the Apple Store or the Google Play Store, search for Truth and Love Jax, download our app, and you can give that way. We thank you for your participation. We thank you for your generosity, and we love you, and we'll see you next time. Here comes the church. God bless you.